In this video, I'm going to be reviewing the Italian film The Life Ahead, which stars Sofia Loren and was directed by her son, Eduardo Ponti. And I will be talking about how this film really is the beauty of empathy, compassion, and love for one another. Hi everyone, welcome to Robert Bellissimo at the Movies, a video podcast which explores the many different ways in which stories are told on film. Today I'm going to be talking about The Life Ahead, which is a Netflix film which just came out last year, November 2020. A uh, really extraordinary film, powerful. Uh, Sophia Loren hasn't acted in seven years and here she is with a stunning stunning performance and uh, before I go on I just want to highlight many of the key cast members uh, you have as Lola a Abril Zamora uh, Ibrahima Guya as Momo apologies if I'm not uh, pronouncing that correctly Babak Karima is Hamil Yusuf Purvu is Yusuf um, the, the performances were stunning I mean it's an emotional film I think essentially it's about uh, connection and, and empathy and, and love uh, for one another and, and how much, what that does to people uh, on a spiritual level, how important um, connecting and, and forming a family, uh, even if those people aren't your blood relatives, but having people in your life that are a good influence on you, uh, that give you a sense of direction, a sense of uh, purpose. And we see off the top uh, this uh, Momo, he's an immigrant child uh, from uh, Senegal and he's lived in Italy since he was a boy and he's troubled. Uh, his mother um, passed away. Uh, his father was, was his mother's pimp. And um, it's, you know, obviously he's been through a lot already at a young age and he's living with his foster parent and he, he feels he can't take care of him anymore. The, the boy is constantly stealing and he's getting into all sorts of trouble. So off the top, he actually steals uh, the purse of Sophia Loren and then you know he brings he realizes who's the purse it, that it belongs to to uh mama rosa madame rosa who sophia Re loren plays and then he forces he tells him to apologize uh and you know he doesn't really mean it he says sorry madame roma is is uh, not not the uh, warmest person she's tough she's uh very direct she's angry uh she doesn't seem like someone who would take care of children uh who are you know, refugees, or, or uh, there are also some of them, uh, one of the kids is, uh, you know, their mothers are prostitutes. Uh, we see one of the babies she looks after, his uh, mother is a transgender prostitute, uh, played brilliantly again by uh, Abril Zamora, a character's name is Lola. Um, so, you know, Sophia Loren is, is taking care of these, these kids, uh, and she just seems very harsh and, and, you know, the boy and her do not get along. And actually, the only reason she takes the boy on is because the doctor pays her a lot of money and she wants more and more. Uh, he And they can't stand each other, you know, and, and he's drug dealing. He's working for a drug dealer. Uh, here he is, this little kid dealing drugs. Uh, I mean, it's quite um, heartbreaking to see that. So, you know, as the film progresses, you know, you she has him work for a character named Hamil and he's also hesitant to take him on. He's a Muslim shop owner and uh, he does. They, they, they form a connection gradually. I mean, he takes a real interest in, in Momo uh, in his life and I think people hadn't given him that kind of attention before. Uh, he starts to come out of his shell of trying to protect himself and he's uh, you know, uh, of his anger and, and distance and wariness uh, of people, and you can totally understand why. But what happens is he, he witnesses uh, a bunch of uh, African characters getting arrested by the police, and he's watching, and Sophia Loren uh, also sees this. And at this point, again, their relationship is not good. I mean, she wants to get rid of him. And uh, that's when things change. She begins to see, she begins to become more compassionate for what he had went through, what he's been through and who he is. And she sees the pain and struggles she had as a young child in him. And when she sees that he's drawing, she goes, oh, I used to draw. So she finds uh, some common ground, a way to connect with him. And then you find out that she was actually a Holocaust survivor. Uh, you see early on the, uh, the, the numbers are marked on her arm, which was what happened to a lot of um, 
people who are br- Jewish people who are brought to the camps. And, you know, she starts to have these episodes of where she's kinetonic on the roof and uh, it's raining and she can't come out of it and the kids are trying to wake her up. Uh, or even she goes on a, for a, uh, they go to a, uh, to a restaurant and then no one can find her. Uh, and then she, again, she's kinetonic and then she has these episodes of wanting to hide because uh, she says that they're after her and it's uh, quite sad. So I think, you know, what's so brilliant about the writing and the direction is not, it's not so, so spelled out as to why these are things are happening to her right now. But my interpretation, and it's more ambiguous, my interpretation is that seeing the boy realizing that she has a lot to relate to with this boy brings back a lot of bad memories. And then at the same time, I think she also, that scene where she sees those African characters getting arrested, I think it really reminded her of being taken by the Nazis into the camps. And, you know, he's seen atrocious things himself, the young boy Momo, and it's reminding him of things that he's seen or he's been through. And so there's a connection right there without anyone saying anything. It's 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 felt uh, and things really change from that point on. There's also this other boy there and she's teaching him how to speak Hebrew uh, and his mother has abandoned him. And so they at first, the two boys don't get along. They fight a lot. But after a while, there's a rapport. They, they begin to connect. They begin to get along. I think it was a real friendship, uh, a, a real love of that that I, I don't know if Momo had had that before. And again, it's not that necessarily anything is said. I think it's living in the same room and having things that they find in common with each other and, and just an understanding that they both have been through the same things. You know, they talk about how their uh, mothers are not around. Uh, Momo's mother is dead and Yusuf's mother abandoned him. He begins to see that people connect with him, relate to him, uh, love him. Again, the power of, of empathy and someone giving you attention and and connecting with others where you know we're not all alone and i imagine perhaps momo i thought he was always in, alone in his struggles but what happens is yusuf uh, his mother comes back so he leaves and i think you know momo reacts so badly because now again it's like the family unit is breaking and when yusuf says he's gonna miss him uh he just tells oh good now i got my own room and get out of here but then as the boy leaves he begins to cry you know and 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 madame rosa played by sophia loren she understands she understands what why the boy's reacting that way she knows what he's going through Uh, it's quite heartbreaking to see children i mean adults of course but particularly children struggle in the sense of coming from poverty and you know refuge people who are forced to leave their countries and um you know it's um it's it's hard to see him alone in his room crying after you know his best friend who a uh, close friend of his is now leaving and again you know he starts to act out and he tells madame roma off tells her to fuck off and she doesn't react she just says it's okay because lola uh, starts, tries to tell him what, what are you doing how dare you talk like that she, she just understands and she doesn't get mad at him. He goes and finds the guy that hires him to d- deal drugs. And it's almost as if he, he thinks that this guy is his family now. And he's hanging out with him. And as the audience, you think, oh my God, no, no, this guy is not your family. He's not your family. And uh, luckily the, the shopkeeper helps him to realize that's the case. And luckily he quits dealing drugs, you know. And there's a beautiful embrace between the shopkeeper and Momo where they hug and he says he's sorry because he also you know got mad at him uh told him off and 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 you know it's it, it's 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 touching it just but again it's just seeing the sense of forgiveness uh, people reaching out to each other compassionate empathetic it's such a it's such a beautiful story you know but uh really this she does you know she feels as though she's getting old she's worried that she's going to be taken to the hospital and you don't really know why she doesn't want to be taken to the hospital and i think it reminds her so much of being taken to one's grave and it's sort of shot that way uh when you see her taken away you know as he he runs off and comes back and he sees her going in an ambulance you don't really know what happened but obviously with the other uh, episode she's been ha- having and you know her health is starts to deteriorate she told him don't ever let me go to the hospital don't let them take me uh when he goes and 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 you know busts her out basically it's um they they're cutting the director uh ponty 
is cutting to the police looking for them and they're hiding in a cellar. She also has this cellar in the basement of their house. And I think really this, you know, again, I like that it, not everything is so, so spelled out. It's really done um, with the use of audience participating in, in what's why certain things are happening. But I really took that as, you know, she sees uh, going to the hospital as being taken to one's death, just like taken to the camps are being taken to your death when you know when she was in Auschwitz uh, during World War II so you know it's a it's a heartbreaking film uh, you know and and I I just thought it was uh, it was a powerful illustration that if we empathize with each other if we're compassionate towards each other if we have strong relationships uh, and and we, we we offer love and understanding if we do that for people who have been through so much who perhaps are angry and, and are in a sh in a shell and gives us an understanding as to why people turn to crime uh, when they don't see a good future because of what they've been through the way people are treating them the fact that their parents are abandoned them or died um, it's amazing what can happen when someone understands you and, gi and gives you empathy and guidance and, and love, and that's what happens to Momo, and I think he'll have a much better future. I think he's, he's, he's a smart kid, and he's gonna go on a much better path. He, he begins to understand that he'll be okay. You know, he's gained a lot from, from the people in his life, and sometimes people come and go, but um, that's life and turning to anger and crime is, 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 is not the answer. It's just, I think he knows that that's gonna bring him into, uh, into a bad ending for himself. So, highly recommend. This is on Netflix, I, I really enjoyed it. It's great to see Sophia Loren uh, back on the screen giving a fantastic performance directed by uh, her son, Eduardo Ponti. And every, the entire cast is just absolutely phenomenal. So. I highly recommend it. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching. Again, if this is your first time here, or if you haven't already done so, please consider subscribing to my channel. I want to thank all of my uh, Patreon members, uh, and the information on my Patreon is in the description box below for anyone who may be interested. Thanks again. I'll see you soon.